When discussing digital literacy, Megan Four said, we will not be able to achieve a liberating collective intelligence until we can achieve a collective digital literacy. And we have now more than ever the opportunity and the technologies to assist us in the human project of shaping, creating, and developing ourselves as the formers of our own culture. Before I was enrolled in my communications theory and practice course, I was not one to use social media because I saw it as a way to deceive others through a form of false identity. Sure, I knew that it had its fair share of benefits, such as entertainment from the notorious Kardashian family, but I did not think that the positive outcomes outweighed the negative ones. I deleted my social media applications for a long period of time and found my life to be far less dramatic than it was before. I love my new lifestyle of being unconcerned with the drama until my teacher, William Wolfe, made us create a Twitter account for class. He said something along the lines of, it is up to you what and who you follow. You can find things and accounts that can relate to your life that can have huge benefits on the way you think and live, but I'm sure that some of you are not doing so and therefore are hating social media as a whole. Yes, it is true that social media contributes to bullying, photoshopped images, and the creation of deceiving people, but that does not mean that you are required to follow people who use it in that manner. Instead, you can use it to search for recent news, your favorite food recipes, and to help collaborate ideas for school and business. Neil Postman and Clay Shirky are aware of the negative factors that social media can bring to the table by saying that people are more vulnerable to believe information. However, they claim that it creates more benefits for people than it does destroy them. In his article, Becoming Screen Literate, Kelvin Kelly says, Screens are everywhere. Because we are evidently living in a digital age, in order to be successful, we must participate in it. Digital literacy is the social interactions and implications of the worldwide online community. Cindy Self defines technological literacy as a complex set of socially and culturally situated values, practices, and skills involved in operating linguistically within the context of electronic environments, including reading, writing, and communicating. Digital literacy is an important component of being a digital citizen, which is a person who is responsible for how they utilize technology in order to interact with the digital world around them. Digital technology allows people to interact with family, friends, colleagues, and strangers who have similar interests with all of the busy constraints of today's world. These methods can increase communication for tons of people, but different cultures have access to different forms of technology and provide different ideas and input, which affect social and cultural situated values. Websites like Twitter, Zite, Pocket, and Facebook have led to global and cultural participation. Educators from across the world are teaching students about the importance of these digital literacy forms at a young age because everyday jobs have a strong demand for required knowledge of digital literacy in order to assist in presentations and analyzing data which increase productivity. The World Wide Web has clearly created a new form of communication. It enables collaboration between countless people, which results in new ideas and theories to be elaborated on. This new form of communication has been relied on in order to expand thoughts and principles. Some forms of communicating come from the following programs. Zite filters through articles so that they are specific to one's personal interests. Some of my personalized choices include travel, national and global news, and new trends. Pocket enables you to save the articles that you can find on Zite for a later time, which makes them easily accessible for the user. Feedly allows you to collect videos and articles that are all related to each other and then allows you to put them into categories. Programs like LinkedIn and Facebook connect people with opportunities that will help them get started with their careers, and businesses can be reassured that the employees that they are searching for have appropriate qualifications. Twitter is a program that allows you to express your thoughts within a word limit. This limitation keeps people's ideas concise and straight to the point. You can even retweet others' ideas, answer to them, and post articles from other programs. WordPress enables people to create and share their own content too, but instead by developing a personalized website, which can relate back to the articles that can be found through the previous applications that I mentioned. I ended up writing about my travel experiences on NicoleNolting.com, and I've gotten new followers and great feedback by promoting myself through my other social media accounts. Being able to relate to information other than your own enables your work to be seen by other enthusiasts. Creating your own content by putting your own information out on the web empowers you to consume important subject matter by being able to do the following. 1. Filtering the material that you find to be useful and then taking out its best content in order to share specific ideas and thoughts with others. 2. Connecting by relating ideas together and by adding meaning and a new spin on interpretation. 3. Critiquing by debating points and perspectives and presenting them persuasively. And 4. Advocating by encouraging other readers to respond and participate in whatever it is that you're writing about. 
Creativity is endless when you're using this foiling method, and it allows you to distribute cultural and personal influence while building off of others' ideas. These are techniques that are implemented into the 21st century workforce that can help benefit individuals and their ideas, but they also have benefits to businesses as well. Businesses are able to collaborate and keep in touch with other businesses that will help them expand their horizons and reach their ultimate goals. Although this sounds like a flawless method to collaborate and expand on ideas, there are some flaws in the process. Copyright laws are a huge factor in our society because people want to be recognized for their work and theories. In the TED Talk, Everything is a Remix, copyright is described as a limitation in today's society. In order to be as productive as possible, we need to be able to elaborate on others' ideas so that we can expand our knowledge on new theories. Being confined by not being able to base new ideas off of others makes it seem as though our culture does not want us to benefit each other. This law promotes money instead of ideas, which creates a huge flaw for our society. Digital literacy has changed communication tactics for our generation, and it will continue to for generations to come. We can now choose what information we want to learn about, communicate with people whose lives we are interested in within a matter of seconds, and we can express our personal opinions to the digital world. Collaboration and productivity is endless if we strive to communicate through the internet by taking advantage of all of its applications. The standard for technical knowledge is constantly increasing due to the consistent flow of the information that is on the web, and by choosing not to participate in it like I once did, you will only be, be preventing yourself from benefiting.